Guys, um, I love Chapter 2. I mean, its title is deceptively boring. It is pretty much the battlefield where we survive, uh, we go to war, um, we fend off attacks, uh, we're trying to pursue the consumer dollar, and um, this is our, our environment. Uh, this is where our competitors work. They, they have employees which are highly trained in marketing, R&D, all sorts of stuff competing against us. Um, yeah, so what I want to do now, and really this is a, a chapter that is very much told through diagrams. Um, you can read it, but realistically, every element of the diagrams we have here, you will understand. Having done business studies or just being um, a member of the community, going into shops, buying, making purchase decisions, and the diagrams just tell the story so beautifully. And the reason I've kept these two chapters back and haven't put them up front is because promotion of the digital age is really one of the most prominent aspects of marketing. And by now, because we've used a lot of brand examples, a lot of company examples, you've started to appreciate the marketing's just about definitions and putting together a nice ad here and there. It's a ton of strategy behind it of how you outperform outcompete and delight the customer while making a profit and um, that is that does not happen by accident so anyhow let's have a look at our marketplace our marketing world and the world that you will live in the corporate world um, this is the reality of life your employers will be organizations um, they may be non-profits or most likely for profit and you need to know what factors impact on how they behave the decisions they make now i didn't really care too much about that um, i wanted to go straight to here marketers are faced with internal pressures which include the economic imperative to grow the bottom line guys in english make profit or lose your job it's not that hard Right, many marketers offered incentive schemes that deliver uh, pay increases or bonuses who can meet your targets. You get rewarded by bringing in dollars. We're very sophisticated salespeople and a lot of times work hand in hand with the sales department. Show me the money, right? Generate profit. You can reinvest it in the business. Everyone keeps their job. We can also take the profits and help improve the sustainability of products and services and develop new, more ethical new products sourced more ethically. Profit is not necessarily a bad thing. It's what you do with it. Now, the marketing environment. Again, guys, this is one of my all-time favorite diagrams uh, because it just captures everyone who matters, everything that matters, people, the customer, organization, processes yeah you've got competitors customers partners the general industry the micro environment which we'll go into and you've got your environmental which is a massive issue now with climate change political what kind of system are we having how is technology affecting us oh, we've had a technological uh, overload the last six weeks the economy we're talking about the worst economic conditions ever legal what can you can't you do but this captures that in marketing everything is related everything can have an impact depending on which customer you serve who's your target market right if you're selling cereals part of this will be impacted if you're selling cars it'll be impacted if you're providing tertiary educational services like a degree parts of this will come into play we as professionals we're doing a university degree, have to realize that, guys, nothing happens in isolation in marketing. And this is beautiful. Right, environmental analysis, break it down. Palm oil is not a nice product. Um, they're destroying the orangutan's um, natural habitat. Um, they're, they're beautiful creatures. And um, again, a lot of pressure is being put on companies to do the ethical thing and not source palm oil from these areas or use it at all use substitutes again it comes back to consumer pressure and um, that is what we want companies to be doing to be sourcing things ethically with a mind to doing as little harm to the environment and people 
in general. Now, guys, what have we got? The internal environment. This is <laughs> this is the organisation, the corporation. If you guys want to scare yourselves, look up an old DVD on YouTube called The Corporation. Pretty much it showed Western companies um, behaving in the manner of a psychopath and uh, the lack of ethics and the, the constant drive for profitability at all costs was frightening. Luckily, we've changed and a lot of companies are moving away from that. Um, we are looking at adopting um, the, the world sustainability objectives to really try to do business in a more sustainable and pretty much a better way for people planet in generating profit. So internally, it's your company. So guys, look, we've all got these senior, these senior managers, middle managers. A functional department is just the label you put around groups. Uh, my PhD was on marketing, working with research and development, manufacturing, um, and engineering to develop new products. Uh, what was the relationship like? You know, 15 years ago, they didn't like marketing because we were full of, let's just say, we weren't as credible as we should be. Now, with 12 subjects under our belts, we're providing a greater um, sense of credibility to everything that we do, especially with the new metrics that capture the voice of the customer. But that's why when I talk to you guys, many of you will be doing your majors in these areas. Um, in a lot of organizations, you work together in teams to solve problems. So understanding a little bit about everything is why you have a commerce core. Um, now, guys, this is an organizational chart which just shows the split and how people respond upwards and go to the next level in management. Okay, nice, but this, this one I like. Internal marketing explaining to the rest of the company how marketing adds value. When we say give us $10 million, we can now say why. Um, scarily, for the first time ever, we can actually tell um, the accountants, the finance guys, pretty much exactly what our return on marketing investment, Romy, is likely to be. First time ever. We know what advertising work what doesn't we have software packages that track this especially with social media it is absolutely um, hoot sweet um, it's just insane social status is a software package developed in Wollongong at the iAccelerate uh, great team down there have organized it where you can subscribe and it will show you all of your competitors posts um, the main thing about internal marketing years ago we had a massive credibility problem people couldn't see the value of it marketing is now becoming one of the major drivers of organization success and your top brands your gucci's what have you are very much driven by marketing and its um, impact on um, influencing customer behavior um, you yeah, know the external environment is you know, the outside legal we get that right we'll go back to the previous diagram now, guys, I think we know what customers of climate is. Yeah, you know, what are the needs? This is why we'll do in chapter three market research. How do we know what their needs are? Look at them. Yeah, you know, follow forums where they go. Gee, I wish the product could do this. I wish you could get this. Oh, I'd love to go overseas, and I, I hope the hotel would offer this service. These are all opportunities for you to do stuff. Partners, guys, look again. Major companies, even small to medium ones, have relationships with all of these. Um, it's interesting that a lot of the marketing jobs aren't within companies. Um, as a graduate role, a lot of it you work for an agency that gets contracted out to a bigger. Samsung will say, hey, to um, yeah, we have Connected Digital, a great local firm run by um, Josh and Laura Barnes, um, who provide online um, advertising okay great digital uh, firm that uh, has helped develop our mark 233 subject uh, you contract them out to do buying you space on instagram or whatever platform uh, rather than having in-house experts to do it it's cheaper it's more effective and it's usually a lot quicker now guys this is your traditional types of competition pure competition I despise it means everyone's selling the same thing an example of this is barley where every poor retailer has the same 
product and we go over there and haggle them down to the last cent. Oligopoly, a few buys. My favourite is, uh, yeah, you have Monopsony, the market where there is only one buyer. Oh, actually, that doesn't interest me. One supply interests me, Monopoly. Guys, in a Monopoly, who cares about customer service and satisfaction? Here it is, you want it, you pay, and you pay at my price. Uh, most countries have made sure they're illegal. Um, now, guys, levels of competition, you can read that, doesn't really do it for me. Um, but, yeah, you look at the macro environment. Um, you look at influence. Marketers, macro environmental factors could be um, the government, the technology, all of these things, political at the moment, guys, who knows what's going on um, in terms of a lot of countries are going to be shaken up after what's happening. The economy's in free-for-all. Cultural factors affect the way you do business and technology, environment and legal. Um, these are referred to as PESTEL and never forget it because it's a classic multiple choice question. P-E-S-T-E-L. Again, what I'm trying to say is all of these affect your business and target groups in a different way, depending on what you're selling, okay? Marketing, again, is about understanding the impact of this on your customer they're purchasing and what, if political, the economy is telling me you can and can't do in terms of what claims you make to those customers. Um, you know, political forces, guys, I've just um, highlighted the definitions, economics, Again, socio attitudes, beliefs, and socio cultural forces, technological forces. Guys, just read the first few lines. Um, we get it. We are part of the world uh, global economy. We're part of the national economy. We know that government plays a role in, um, um, you know, labelling, for instance, on our brands. Um, you know, saying what we need to say in terms of nutritional value, country of origin, all of these things. Um, all impact certain businesses. Now, this is where I get, I just get a little bit crazy, guys. I taught marketing strategy for 20 odd years. Uh, it was a final marketing subject. This is to me where the guys who know their marketing are literally the generals commanding their troops in how to do battle with their competitors. A situation analysis lets you understand. Where are we now? What are your strengths and weaknesses compared to your competitors' strengths and weaknesses? And how are they perceived by the target markets or potential target markets? Um, you have your organisational objectives. Again, senior managers have their objectives. Um, at the moment, our senior guys are going provide a quality online experience for our students. Um, in obviously a tumultuous period in time. Now, marketing planning is, well, management have said, hey guys, we want a 10% increase in market share or in satisfaction with um, the learning experience. Well, all the four Ps, the seven Ps, how do we use the resources to get the consumers to actually believe that's a reality, that's what's happening. Now, the situational analysis, guys, have a look at this. This is why a marketing plan is just page after page of questions. Um, understanding yourself, know yourself, um, is one of Sun Tzu's most important things. What are our goals? Our market share, the, my favorite all-time diagram, is a pie chart, right? You literally, you draw a pie chart, Right, you, you sit there, that's total market share, it could be sales. You draw it and you go, okay, that could be Nike. Um, and that may be, what, just under 25%. That could be Adidas. Um, that could be Under Armour. Uh, that could be a myriad of competing firms which are just so, so small that they're niche players, but they don't really make a difference. Now, if I can realize how to take this off, it'll be really good. <laughs> My apologies, guys. Still trying to, to learn how to do it. Oh. Sorry about the minor technical glitch. 
But guys, have a look at the company analysis. This is pretty much doing an audit of your own strength. Now, market analysis is where you realize, is the, the market growing? Uh, how big is it in terms of dollars, consumers, and customers, needs, buyers? These are the questions we ask every day, and most of our organizations will have really good ideas on um, a great understanding who their customers are. Now, you've got your pestle feeds into your situation analysis, and this is where I, I love it. Nothing excites me more than your competitive analysis. Know what your competitor is up to, what they're doing, how they're going about influencing, promoting their products versus you and everyone else in the marketplace. And you can come up with tactics and strategies that will slow them down, or you can mimic or what have you. But this is the battle place. The situation analysis is where our company organization sits in the marketplace, in the eyes of the consumer, right? It is vitally important. Um, yeah, you don't know who your competitors are, you die. You don't know what your capabilities are, you start a war that you will lose and you lose market share. You don't understand your customers, you will lose market share. Um, and you, know, you piss off the wrong people in politics, you don't understand the economy or the social factors or the technology legal, you're going to make mistakes. Now, I have tried to teach you the art of war. You win your battles by making no mistakes. If you know this, you don't make mistakes. You don't do anything silly. All right? Now, again, guys, look, the marketing plan, surprise, surprise, this looks very much like your report, but you have... Your objectives here, this is what you will do in marketing strategy. All we want you to understand now is that this is the language, this is the profession of the marketer. This is what we do. And you look at all the four Ps and then the seven, the other three Ps to make the seven Ps, and you look at how they add value. It always comes back. Add value for your target markets. Do it the same or better than your competitor. That is our profession. And marketing metrics, this will be a classic multiple choice question, um, is how do we measure the, the success or that we're spending our money the right way? We've got millions of dollars in budget. What's the return on investment? Has sales volume gone up? The number of sales, what do we do? What's the bottom line? How profitable are we? Or a new metric, how happy are you guys? Are you happy with UAW? Are you happy with universities? Are you happy with your toilet paper provider, I don't know. But again, market share is a classic one because with more market share, you share cash flow, you can then buy more marketing resources, airtime, influencers, uh, billboards, right? Market share equals power. And brand equity is how loyal are your customers? We know this. How many prefer Adidas overnight or are they the same? or uh, Under Armour's coming up. Guys, this is our profession. This is what you go in a marketing job. These are the words that we will be talking about every single day. All right, that is what we do. Now, situation analysis is your classic strengths and weaknesses framework. This is beautiful. I absolutely uh, love this in terms of uh, what does your company do well? What do your customers compliment you on? If you just answered these basic questions and turned the discussion points up here, you've pretty much done a marketing plan and you're in a great position to understand your business. You know, what are the threats? What do your competitors do better than us? In our university setting, they have a higher reputation. Does it actually mean that their students are better than ours? Um, I personally don't think so. With the amount of students of mine that have gotten blue chip um, jobs in the best companies in Australia and have moved around the world, yes, but there are certain employers that still would view you have to come from a top eight university. Um, now, guys, here's a nice one for a retail shop. Probably not a great example at the moment, but most managers and even small business owners actually know this. They just never put it down in writing in such a simple form. And that's what I'm trying to teach you guys with the mini reports. You just do this highly effectively, get to the point and present it. That's our profession as marketers. 
All right, so when we do a SWOT analysis, guys, we're pretty much, we're done. Know your marketplace, know who your competitors are, know your customer, know what you can do, um, and what competitive advantage. I call them the four Cs, customer, company, competitor, competitive advantage. If you can do those and understand the relationships with your four Ps, do a situation, a SWOT analysis, guys, you are so far ahead of the game versus your fellow undergrads that all they're going to remember from a marketing course was, yeah, we did a couple ads and, um, you know, went a few chutes and, you know, it was fun. That is not your purpose. You are there to generate value in the competitive marketplace. I love the summary here. Um, from in here, I'm going to draw multiple choice questions and possibly from here as well. But this is what we, we're, this is our environment. Using these words, going to work, getting paid because we add value to companies and that value is from understanding what works for the customer and what factors either help or hinder us in delivering our value proposition to the customer. All right, guys, I hope that's made sense. Um, and remember, this is our world.